Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glue Stick channel. Here in the summer, the southern hemisphere, winter is coming. So it's a good time to talk about the warg and the winter wolf. In Norse mythology, a varga is a wolf, and in particular it refers to the wolf Fenrir, and his sons Skull and Hati. Based on this, J.R.R. Tolkien in his fiction used the old English form warg to refer to a particularly large and evil kind of wolf. In the Forgotten Realms, we take this a step further or perhaps get back to their mythical origins and the warg is a magical beast very similar to a wolf in form but much larger and still with a fiendish aspect. They have glowing eyes of uh, red and an evil intelligence. They are 3 feet high and 5 feet long on average, weighing around 300 pounds, that's 136 kilograms. So physically much uh, more than a match for most humanoids one on one. They have grey or black fur, thick and bristling as it grows over the back of the neck and shoulders, giving the impression that their hackles are always raised and aggressive. Certainly they intimidate any normal canines and do not cohabitate with them. Fights between wargs and wolves will usually end up with wolves dead and eaten by the wargs. A pretty good sign actually that one or two are in the area would be finding some wolf carcasses that appear to have been killed by some sort of a larger wolf. Wargs occupy the same niche as wolves, hunt the same game and the same territory, territory, but are far less numerous, which seems odd at first considering their intelligence. Unlike other canines, uh, wargs are capable of speech, they have a language of their own, and will know how to speak in common and goblin, but they're not urbane conversationalists, they are neutral evil predators who hunt and kill humanoids, so to them, speaking is as much a hunting tool as we would use a duck caller. It's also something that they use to deal with humanoids who attack them in overwhelming numbers, capturing them and enslaving them, which is what goblins tend to do far too often. So the uh, lack of wargs in the environment is simply because um, it's a harsh environment and wargs exist in lower numbers, um, and they tend to hang out with evil creatures and it's just a higher attrition rate. Plus they're larger and require um, a more game rich environment so they tend to hunt out the area reasonably quickly so they have a much larger territory. So a lower population base. Not It's not that goblins are smarter or more capable than other humanoids. They quite frequently end up on the menu of the warg in their attempts to capture them. It's more that the goblins are sufficiently cruel and evil to inflict the brutality and torture that is required to keep a warg under control. They will track down the warg and if it's a large solitary male they'll typically back off and try to keep tabs on where it's going. If it's a female they will only attempt to capture it Capture it if they already have a kennel of wargs they can breed her with. Otherwise, they'll wait until they find a warg mother and her pups, kill the mother and take the pups. Wargs raised in goblin captivity are psychologically broken. They feel trust and affection towards their captors because it's the only way that they can survive without being badly disfigured or terribly maimed, starved and tormented. They are subject to frequent beatings and they consider it normal. They are so conditioned by the goblins that wargs compete amongst each other for extra scraps of food. The goblins keep them under control at all times and the keepers of wargs have quite a lot of status in goblin tribes. So they are very, um, and I use this word with a great deal of sinister overtones, attentive masters. In the wild, wargs behave like wolves, though they hunt in uh, smaller game when by themselves. Mostly rodents, wild sheep, goats, and the livestock of humanoids. When in a mated pair or a pack, they will hunt larger game. Like wolves, they stalk prey and wear down the prey before closing in for the kill. However, if starving, they will go directly for a kill, attempting to at least corner their prey and charging in with savage bite attacks. We all know how wolves and dogs fight, no need to go into great detail, but something the size of a wolf can inflict some really nasty wounds, as you can imagine. Uh, wolves avoid taking humanoid prey unless desperate. Wargs avoid taking humanoid prey unless a good opportunity presents itself. They seek out sick and injured prey and they will target the old and the infirm and the young. So if confronted by a warg, the best thing to do is display strength as much as possible to make it very clear that, to the warg that this is a fight will come away, they will come away with significant injuries at the very least. Um, this might be enough to persuade a lone warg, uh, Warg, but if a pack is after you, your best bet is to make it for shelter and the safety of numbers. Wargs are smart enough to open doors, dig through a thatched roof, dig under a wall, and they can climb a tree, but it will attempt to drag a victim down from the tree, killing it on the ground. 
Uh, wargs will savage the hindquarters of to slow down and bleed out their prey. They tear out the throat and then rip open the torso and go for the organs first. A pack of wargs can eat a human to the point it's very hard to identify the body in under an hour or so. An adult warg can gorge itself on uh, up to around 40 pounds of meat, and they typically go without food for a few days, but will need at least six pounds of meat per day to stay healthy and three times as much during breeding season. Wargs have very large territories, as mentioned. They are constantly on the move. Each adult warg will consume at least 30 to 40 deer or equivalent per year, and they're smart enough to quickly leave the area once they take humanoid prey. They will return to any good hunting spot year after year, and rangers know that wargs are certainly a threat to any frontier region and will kill them on sight. The range over, um, they range over almost every part of Faerun, avoiding extremely hot, dry or intensely cold areas, and wolves tend to range further into game poor areas such as above the alpine mountain forest line or into deserts and such, since they are better suited to subsisting on a diet of much smaller games such as mice, rats, rabbits and the like. Also, wolves tend to eat more vegetables and fruits than wargs. Wolves will willingly eat the berries of mountain ash, lily of the valley, bilberries, blueberries and cowberry. Other fruits include nightshade, apple pears and melons. Wargs do not eat berries and fruit, ever. Wargs encountered in dungeon, dungeons and ruins will either be escaped goblin raised wargs or the pups of one. Wild wargs avoid the chosen habitats of goblinoids um, otherwise. But those raised in such places will return to similar environments to have their own pups. Psychological conditioning. In the wild, wargs will seek out a den, which can be as simple as a dugout burrow, to a cave that they return to um, around mating season each year or every couple of years. Pups will be old enough to follow the mother and hunt on their own by six months of age. By one year, they will have reached adult size and by three years, reach sexual maturity. They may live around as long as wolves, usually five to ten years in the wild, certainly no longer than twenty. But if their fiendish heritage is a factor, it may be much longer. I don't actually know whether that's the case or not. It probably is. The winter wolf is similar to a uh, more similar to a warg than a wolf. They are possessed of a wicked intelligence and cunning. Grow four to f uh, to four and a, f a half feet tall at the shoulder, eight feet in length, and weigh four hundred and fifty pounds or two hundred and four kilograms. They have bright blue eyes, um, sometimes almost a silvery blue, and snow white fur that they use very effectively as camouflage in the high alpine and arctic terrain they range in. They come down to lower latitudes and follow the snows of winter months. Um, they are more of an ambush predator than a wolf or a wolf. They have a number of hunting methods that they can use. They leap out of hiding and rip out a tendon of the leg or simply tear the guts open and hang back waiting for prey to come down. They can chase and tap the foot of prey, tripping them up at full speed. And I experienced this this firsthand when I was having a playful run around with an Irish wolfhound one day. I came down like a sack of bricks and I swear that dog was laughing at me. Nice one, Tarquin. Winter wolves can circle around their prey and they attempt to escape. Any attempt to escape will incur a vicious attack and eventually they will close in to finish the job. Plus, they have a supernatural ability to breathe gusts of cold, intense cold, which they are completely immune to. And so, with two wolves, one will grab and hold the prey while the other will unleash a freezing blast. Just like the warg, they have the ability to talk and speak their own language, as well as giant and common. They tend to live in packs of three to five and can sometimes be found in the company of frost giants, white dragons and other evil beings who live in very cold places. I'm a bit sketchy on that whole white dragons thing because white dragons tend to kill anything. Winter wolves are vulnerable to and absolutely hate fire, and they have a special hatred of dwarves, orcs, goblinoids, and humans who tend to make use of fire quite frequently. They are none too keen on fire giants, so frost giants leave the wolves at home when they go uh, when they're going to trade looted metals for high quality forged weapons from their kin. Aside from dragons, griffins, large drakes, monstrous creatures, and humanoids, the wargs and wolves and winter wolves have one other predator group, which is the big cats, 
the, with wolves quite often falling prey to tigers and uh, lions, which are more far more commonplace in the wilds of Faerun. Winter wolves also have to keep a wary nose to the ground for the dreaded remoras. And that's about it. Thanks for listening. Always good to cross a request off the list. Keep them coming, as, I, as always. And I'll be back with more for you very soon. Don't forget to join our Discord server and come say hi. There is a full list of all the un, uh, the requested video topics there. And also, there's a place where you can make new requests. But as always, I'll take them down below in the comment section. And I welcome any uh, comments that you have. Any requests for any monsters that you ever have, just let me know. I'll get to them eventually. Can't guarantee I'll do it very quickly, but I'll do my best. Um, I've had some requests, a lot of requests lately for aquatic monsters and things like that. So I'm going to bump some of the aquatic stuff up the up the listing um, the request lists and see if I can do some more aquatic themed stuff over the f next few weeks. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'll catch you again soon. Mm -hmm.